Hello, welcome back and thanks for clicking on this video in which I'd like to show you how I used to the treacheries of the troublesome towns following the guild's uh, journey with uh, this uh, huge notebook. It's still the same guild, still the same adventures. And last time I showed you how I built up a campaign a full overland and what uh, they found dungeons and towns and this time of course we didn't have a city builder so we've lost the guilds adventures at the meanwhile at home page and it is a very very short section because uh, I was really waiting for the treasuries of the troublesome towns so I tried to build uh, using the uncharted settlement uh, jungle village for example just to experiment with the different styles and finally when it arrived, I was like, uh, okay, I have to read, of course, the base rules. And uh, you could see my first impressions in the previous Treacheries of the Troublesome Towns videos. And actually, the first thing I did with this guild is to change their profile and move to the Calypso, this ship, and uh, they became a traveling guild. So how it went. In the treasuries of the Trouble sometimes you can find the rules for buying a house and uh, build the different areas of the house, like the trophy room or the wizard's emporium or the kitchen hospital. So it has a, a, a very a huge list of how to build a home for the guild. And uh, just a few pages later, there are options for buying a ship and building a ship with the same methodology. It was more than 5,000 gold pieces, but they had many adventurers. This is an expert level guild with all the members uh, being in expert level so they had enough money to buy this ship and move to uh, the high seas and uh, it was almost a year uh, when uh, they finally uh, could rest because it was the 77th of fall uh, we don't have winter in my play uh, in, in my world uh, so after fall immediately arrived uh, spring and um, uh, they decided that uh, as most of the guild members came from the fishmongers eyes they will visit their families their friends and relatives and visit home and uh, because i already had the treasuries of the tower sometimes they used of course the calypso to travel home and we have some rules for traveling on sea we have had to fight sea hydras and sharks and uh, count the days uh, how uh, how far they are from the fishmonger's eyes and then it was where they hook arrived to go to an unknown town and explore it the town's name is Little Dahoy uh, because the family members said that recently some pirates were raiding the fishmonger's eyes and of course our adventurers wanted to defend their homelands their hometowns so they decided to go and look for uh, these pirates and deal with the pirates captain so they arrived to little dahoy and of course this is uh the uh, the, the finished map of this town. Uh, when I started to play, you can see I arrived from here, uh, landed with the, the Calypso and started to explore the town. And uh, the coloring, uh, I recently started to experiment with the uh, colors in uh, maps. And honestly, uh, when it was black and white, it became really busy. Like these are lined uh, tiles, so these are docks. These are little wavy tiles, so this is water. But when it was black and white, it wasn't uh, so easy to understand and see the whole map and uh, the layout of this uh, settlement. So that's the main reason I used colors, because at first I just colored the blue areas, the water areas, to see where are the canals and where are the docks and the streets. Before I started to play, I made some decisions. For example, I knew that I will look for pirates, so I wanted to add many, many dock type tiles and um, despite we have a d66 tiles table there are some other tile tables here and there through the two tomes for example one uh, directly just for this watery tiles and uh, I was like okay I will roll the d66 but when the result is totally not fitting to my settlement I will reroll using these type of tiles that's how I could uh, build this pirate themed uh, settlement so that was one thing I decided the other thing, um, and it was recently a topic in a, a forum in Reddit, that uh, some of the contents are totally adult contents, mature contents, and uh, it is disturbing uh, for some players. And uh, when uh, I played the first impression with the different guild you could see in the other uh, video, um, later, when I continued the play um, off camera, 
I rolled a result leading to a pregnancy. One of the guild members, actually the youngest male guild member uh, or party member, sorry, because that's just the party, uh, made pregnant one of the shop owner's daughter. And I was like, mm, okay, I don't know where they will be in nine months and I know there will be consequences. So I don't want to go with this. So the second rule for my gameplay was reroll if you don't like the result. Of course, I don't, didn't want to reroll everything, uh, but I made some boundaries for myself to enjoy the game. And you can do this. I really like the analogy that Treacheries of the Trouble Some Towns is a, like a uh, a tons of uh, building blocks like Lego and uh, you can choose how to build your town what type of blocks do you want to use and this is true not just the ties and blocks themselves but the story elements the story blocks so you can of course use all the rules and all the results but if you want you can choose what to use and I really like this in this supplement that if you want to reroll you have many many other results it can uh, it you can have so uh, don't be afraid to follow the rules uh, and don't be afraid to change the rules if you want so these were the uh, main things I decided and uh, what you will see because it became uh, huge uh, it is, I, I know the treacheries of the Taraba Sam Towns is uh, overwhelming itself with the two toms and the hundreds of pages, but really you can choose what to use and what not to use. And uh, what you will see is extreme journaling. So uh, there were some happenings I wanted to record and I made up whole stories. So this is something you really don't have to follow. Uh, I'd like to show you an example how easily you can play without doing this journaling. For example, building six, I rolled a liquor shop. We didn't buy anything, there wasn't any shop to it, nothing special. So basically, I could move on to the next happening, which was a pickpocket icon uh, on the street here. So uh, I could do that. Okay, liquor shop, nothing interesting. Next line, pickpocket, roll for the pickpocket events. Okay, nothing more interesting. I don't want to journal it. Okay, next line. Next roll for building seven. It is a kennel, no shop twist, nothing special. Skip the journaling part. Let's roll for the eighth building. Eighth building, here it is. We moved over uh, the water with a dinghy. There are rules for traveling in a town through kennels in water uh, between the streets. Uh, I really liked it because we have to stall a dinghy, but uh, sometimes the owner of the dinghy appears and offers to buy or become hostile, of course. Uh, so there are many uh, other interesting rules uh, in this supplement. So if I don't want to tell the stories, okay, we went to the kennel and what happened there, basically nothing from gameplay uh, perspective. So you really can skip these journaling parts and just roll for the next building, roll for the next building. And when I arrived to the conservationist garden, there was a shop twist, a quest. And this is the description of the quest, but I also have a quest log. So if you don't want to use journaling techniques or don't want to uh, write down the whole story, you can just open a quest page and list the quests. Why I did it is uh, practical reasons because I knew I will have tons of pages uh, written uh, the story. So um, this is an extreme thing. Please don't follow if you don't like journaling. You can still play the treacheries of the travel some towns and it is really a living town. And uh, a few words about the quest. Mm, there are some quests which can happen in town. So most of the quests are come from uh, the shop owners, but there can be different uh, sources. If you roll for a quest which can uh, be solved in town, you will roll how to solve it many times. And I really like that uh, one time when I found the gang lord, who is the leader of the revolution in this settlement, gave me a quest chain. So there are not just single quests, but quest chains. And um, uh, there is another interesting, yes, deliver the strange letter. Where to deliver? I rolled in a table and the result was to a room four square size. And each time I was in a four square size, it was, uh, I get the quest here and I went to the 11th room. It happened that this is not my target. So I had a failed attempt. And with each uh, attempt, I had an easier task, an easier role to find the exact room, the exact place uh, where I had to deliver the strange letter. So this is a typical quest inside the town, but there can be others, for example, 
uh, I get a quest here from an avatar of a goddess who wanted me to hunt a drake, a dusk drake. And I couldn't imagine that a dusk drake can live in a town. So we went away to the next isle, if I can say, and uh, hunted the dusk drake down and then came back. Uh, another example. Here I've met Harris Davanzu as a result of a role, and uh, he gave me the quest that uh, bring back his three lost rings. And I had the three rings supplement, so I instantly uh, connected the dots and I was like, okay, there is a solution in the description how to solve it in town. But I was like, I know it is a foresty uh, adventure originally, so I moved out of the town and I played the three rings with this reading supplement, uh, fulfilling the quest, and later came back and uh, bring it back to Harris Damanzu. So there are very different quests. And another thing, this is one block. So by rules, this is a hamlet with no sewers, no underground dungeons. It can happen in cities where you have more blocks around this. But I had a quest that someone is uh, hunting us. Um, actually, the, the story is connected because uh, we had to steal some things from Telyafin, the conservationist here. You can see his shop here, the conservationist Telyafin. And uh, he has a rival, Lin, the other conservationist, who has a little garden too. So they are rivals and I had to steal something from Taliafin and later uh, it happened that uh, Taliafin um, hired some bounty hunter to kill us. So when I was here with the team in uh, the building number 45, which is a cruise office, uh, they found us and I had to run away and the quest said uh, they are um, they are following us to the sewers and this icon cannot happen in a hamlet because this is uh, the hatch leading down uh, underground. And uh, as you can see, there are no other hatches in the whole settlement. But the story uh, sent me to underground and there was a pre-made map for this story. So I copied the whole map here from the book. And actually, I did it like uh, it, it fits to this map. So... This is where we arrived from the hatch and uh, actually it happened that uh, as this is a cruise office, I made up the story that maybe the owner is a smuggler. So it went really well that the two dead ends uh, led here, the northern dogs and the southern dogs. So that is another example, came up from a quest, from a story hook, and it can play like in a dungeon uh, we play. So there are very, very different types of quests. And uh, it is a changing environment. For example, I rolled, I was still here in the first uh, area, when I rolled a shop twist leading to an event called. And uh, it made a very cold uh, environment and all the icons through the streets became braziers lit by the guards and the townspeople when uh, evening falls. So the whole picture and the whole experience of the town was really different. Uh, no bullies, no pickpockets, no guards, but braziers here and there. And we, uh, we could move from brazier to brazier, saving versus cold. And the cold has a level, I don't want to spoil it to you. So this is another example for an ever-changing environment. And uh, last day I played, I just rolled an interesting event that tomorrow a uh, creepy carnival will start and it will last for four days, changing all the icons to entertainers. So it is another uh, example how this town, how these settlements are really living settlements. Uh, where can we get the quest from? If we visit all the uh, each of the buildings, the shopkeepers could uh, can give us uh, quests with uh, rolling shop twists. These can lead quests. There are these events like the cold, which came from the Yi Town events table. It is a D66 and a, a really huge table with uh, hostile, with supportive, and with neutral uh, happenings. So this is again something uh, which can totally change uh, the look of the town. And uh, there is a third one, which is a really interesting one, where quests came from, uh, Tavern Rumors. 
in number 16, uh, at first we slept uh, all night uh, in the Calypso, so we went to explore and for the evening we went back to the Calypso as our house. Uh, but later we found an inn in actually in the center of the city, so it was a really good role. And um, one team moved to this inn to be able to easier uh, to easily reach the other parts of the town. And when you spend the night in a tavern or an inn, each morning you have to roll on the tavern rumors table. And I really like that these are not leading anywhere, but these are little uh, info crumbs uh, which can give you inspiration, where to go next, uh, which supplements you can implement to your game. Because, uh, for example, once I had a rumor about the nether world, and I have an expert party, but they became experts through these uh, uh, average type of quests, and they have never been in the nether world. Uh, so this is nothing if I don't want to use it, but these can be good uh, ideas how to continue your story. There are also some keywords, uh, for example, the 49th building is an artificial building uh, selling uh, firearms and the owner of the shop uh, I made up the story that they are friends with Talia Finn the conservationist because I wrote that uh, the artificer won't sell us anything because of our thief keyword so Talia Finn told the artificer not to sell anything to these band because they are thieves so there is a keyword system which also can uh, give you more flavor uh, to, to make your town uh, very unique. So how I started, I've read the basic rules. I started to build up my town. And uh, as the quests came and as the story led me here and there, I just went and explored the thing. And in the meantime, I almost forgot that I have a main quest. I have a target, the pirate's leader. And uh, I already rolled this house, this mansion, uh, which is a block ruler's mansion. Uh, there is always one by rules in every block. And uh, I was like, okay, somehow I have to make up who is this and why is he or she raiding uh, the fishmonger's eyes and to make any connection and solve this situation. And when I've met Harris Davanzu, I was like, he's a young noble guy in a pirate's heaven. It cannot be an accident. It is a very dangerous place for him, especially he's silly and always lost, uh, lose his uh, rings. So uh, I had to make up a backstory for him. And I was like, okay, the only place safe for him to sleep and rest is the mansion. So he has to make, uh, he has to have a connection with the mansion's owner. And I made up that, okay, this will be Harris Davanzu's rebel aunt, Delilah Deborah Davanzu, actually deadly Delilah Deborah Davanzu for the four alliterations to have some advantage, uh, the aunt of uh, Harris Davanzu. So uh, when I needed someone as a main villain, I read it, the Vicious Villains chapter, uh, which is totally not needed for play a Hamlet or start playing by Treacheries of the Troublesome Towns. Another example, I haven't read the uh, rules for underground uh, or sewer dungeon crawling, but when a quest led me there, I read it when I played this Slice Talkable Shadow Wing quest. So, you can start playing really just using the first chapters, which contains the base rules, and then the book will send you to different tables. It will send you to the advanced rules. Uh, for example, when I had this pregnancy role in the other game, uh, I that was the time when I've read all the sections about love and uh, and um, marriage and pregnancy and having kids, because there are rules for having kids and having a family too and go to retirement. Uh, so uh, please don't be afraid for the number of pages, because if you start playing, everything will be connected and you will be led to the different sections you will need. So that's how I played and built up Little the Hoy. And in the meantime, as I mentioned, we sometimes moved out of uh, the town. And uh, and for example, here I have to I had to find a treasure map. And what we knew is that uh, it lost it was lost somewhere in the sea nearby. So uh, we went out of the town for this dungeon. But uh, there are many uh, many many activities inside the dungeon too. 
I hope I could help you understand the rules and how it went. I uh, didn't want to uh, guide you through all the different uh, shops. And uh, what I can suggest you to build up uh, your plan, and not just by rules, as I mentioned in the beginning, but um, I quickly made the counting that uh, I have three or four uh, buildings in a tile average, so I will have around 50 buildings. And I knew that I want to make a list by the end because uh, I will forget where to go uh, for different actions and I don't want to flip here and there. So what I did, I left this page empty and as you can see now I have an alphabetical uh, content table so uh, it is easier to find things uh, but of course I had to um, spend a session uh, to list all the things after the happenings and uh, which was what and then move it to alphabetical order and copy it here but now it's more, much easier for me to move around the town the other thing i uh, uh, i was planning is the quest table and actually i had so many quests it was the 19th building from the 50 something 53 when i had a full quest log uh, so later i uh, opened another quest page when i needed it is just here and i just uh, put this little post it here to know where it is so that's how I planned uh, the pages and, and I left some empty place uh, to make this content table. Um, and maybe it can be interesting, um, the special buildings, because shops and services, you can read and you can understand uh, what can do where. And uh, the special buildings are some interesting ones. For example, I mentioned the headquarter of the revolution, the home of the gun lord. It is uh, here somewhere here, yeah, in the main street. Main street. Uh, and there is a crocodile pit. It was a bit harder to interpret, but it went really well because it is this long building here. And when I went to the building number 20, it is 20A and 20B because the guards here were hostile and I never made it uh, to the back, back room. Uh, and because they were hostile, I had to run away and uh, my team uh, went to the building next door without knowing what's in there and almost fall to a crocodile pit. So now it makes sense that this whole building is actually one building and uh, why this back room is above the water because uh, under the building there is a whole cage for the crocodiles moving here and there and these are the guards crocodiles defending the town. So there can be very interesting results uh, by the rows. And um, I've read that someone mentioned that uh, there would be more variety in the rows. Yeah, I have general vegetables and fruit store at 30 and 50, and I have a uh, where it is import vegetables store at 12. So these were all vegetable store results, but you can give some flavor to it. And uh, it really doesn't matter if it's a vegetable store or a fire elf merchant or a fish market, you will roll for the shop twist. And it doesn't matter which of the shop owners own what type of shop, because the quest will be deliver the letter, steal the key or something which is not related to the type of the building. So I would say if I roll the general store uh, in a row, it really doesn't matter. They are maybe rival general stores in a block. Uh, they are maybe specified for some type of product, but they could give me totally different four quests, not related to the general store. Uh, yeah, so you can see there are some other special buildings uh, like an orphanage or a uh, nest of the rat where yeah, there are some hostile uh, beings, hostile monsters living in the town. So that's how it went. If you have any questions or if you are curious about some of the buildings, some of uh, the quests or the shop services and special buildings, or if you are curious about how my quests went and how they are all connected to a bigger picture, uh, feel free to comment and ask and see you next time. In the meantime, enjoy your playing and build beautiful towns.